Good afternoon, everyone. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the broader markets one more time. I'll use VGT as the proxy for the Qs and VOO as the proxy for the S&P. So we have some real downside levels that we can target. Now let's start the conversation first off with just how much volatility there is in the market. So if we come into our stock volatility box platform, and you scroll down where you can see the 15 day scanner analytics should be very easy to tell when this elevated volatility started. That was August 1st and how today is in comparison to the last week's worth of volatility. So we can see that the volatility is spiked on August 5th. So far, what we're seeing is a little bit of the residue of that volatility, which we're looking to capitalize on. This is not the peak of the volatility like we saw earlier. And we saw that true with the actual markets as well. Now, if I start first with VOO, inside of VOO, I still have a few more downside levels, but it certainly feels like we might be at least getting a double bottom sort of a bounce near this 473 before we see any of these lower numbers. So the closest level I have, 473.20 here on VOO. After that, we're in the 450s at 454.27, and then 442, and finally 428. If we did come all the way down towards this bottom end of the level, that would simply take us to the beginning of earlier this year, which isn't a lot in terms of a major pullback. It just looks like a lot when you zoom out in the grand scope of things, since that also happens to be right near the what highs before the entire bear market in 2022-2023. So in VOO, we have some more downside levels left. In VGT, something similar, except the levels are a little bit more compacted together. In VGT, that real key number that I'm looking at is 500. We have a whole cluster near that 500 zone. Below that, if we do break below, we have 433.71 and really nothing else below that. So 433.71 seems like the downside area. Again, returning you back to those 2022-2023 levels. Now, another thing that stands out is today in particular, it was tech that I think the volatility was prevalent in where you could take advantage of it. Let's start with the queues first. Now in the queues, if I load in our daily models, these are the daily stock volatility box models. You should notice how price action breached our aggressive clouds, breached the conservative clouds, and really here the sellers just didn't keep pushing it down much further. We did have that short little bounce into the close, with that really large candle right after the market closed. Contrast this with August 5th activity. This was the day the volatility spiked, and you should notice that very clear difference here. So that's what I mean by this current volatility is still very much tradable compared to at least August 5th, where you saw that was much greater. SPY looks similar to what we just saw in that we broke below the conservative clouds. So there again, why I say tech is a little bit more tradable right now, you can see how the volatility there is different compared to the queues. And inside of DIA, something similar to what we saw inside of the queues. And even August 5th was a much better day in terms of trading. So the Dow and the queues are where I think the volatility is currently at. And of course, you have pockets such as, say, Meta, where you'll get stocks actually breaching our volatility box models. And the easiest way to find that is to come inside of the live scanner during live market hours and you will be able to pick and choose from three different tabs. The overlap tab, which tells you where do you have an hourly plus a daily volatility edge, or you can simply focus in on the daily tab if you want to find just a running list of uh, opportunities in this high volatility. You'll find names like XLV, so ETFs, you'll find Meta on the uh, overlap tab today, XLI, TJ Maxx, JP Morgan towards the end, and if we come earlier in the day, you'll be able to find morning volatility opportunities, which is where Meta presented itself. If you do want to see more setups, just click the daily tab or even the hourly where you'll see a lot of opportunities. And on the daily tab, you can pick and choose as we're really just cycling through the day. And this list will just keep updating automatically. So you have lots of opportunities to take advantage of this current volatility but in terms of actual sectors, we saw why the Dow and the Q stand out, along with some downside levels in VGT that you can use for just longer term, broader downside targets that we might be working towards. I hope you found this video useful for those of you looking to take advantage of this volatility. 
I showed you ways to play some automated trading orders to buy some of these longer buy the dip setups, and I'll continue working on some more where we introduce things like moving averages, find ways that we might be able to tie a buy order directly to either the 50 simple or even the 200 simple. Take care everyone, leave some comments with maybe future automated trading videos you'd like to see, and that gives me an idea of how you're looking to take advantage of buying this dip. I'll see you in our next update. Thank you.